C. Lindelof videos, college algebra and compound interest, finding the doubling rate. So in this question, we're asked to find the rate. First thing we do is start off with the formula for compound interest, and it says the amount that we have is equal to the principal, that is the starting amount, plus times the quantity 1, plus the rate as a decimal over the, the number of compounding periods, times the number of compounding periods, times the number of years. So here's the question that we're given this time. We're told that we're going to be given five years. We're going to be given five years. We're going to say n is equal to 1, so it's going to be compounded one time per year. And we're asked to find what's the rate. So what's the rate? What rate would we have to receive from the bank, or whoever our investor was, to double our money in five years? The first thing I, I'm hoping you notice is that there's a ton of variables here. So the first thing I would suggest is to look through and figure out what you can replace. For example, it says here n is 1, so I have n is 1 here. The time, which is 5, is t, so 5. Again, n is 1 here. So we're starting to get this thing pared down a little bit. So take a look. We have a is equal to the principal amount times 1 plus r. And we don't know what the rate is, but it's r over 1. So now it's just rate, isn't it, to the fifth power. Now we're down to having three variables, a, p, and r. We just want r. So look at this for a second. We don't know what our principal amount is, but we know that as, as a result of this investment, we want to get twice that much back. So a should be equal to 2p, right? We want to get back twice our principal to be this amount. So look at this for a second. So this starts to clean itself up really quickly. So from here, you can see that we're down to two variables. However, we're not told what our principal is. It doesn't matter what the principal is. So what we're going to do here is this. The relationship between the principal and this quantity is multiplication. So we're just going to divide both sides by p. Now we have 2 is equal to 1 plus the rate to the fifth power. Hopefully you can see this. This is actually not that bad. This can actually be done. Remember where we started with such a mess, but we took our time, got rid of as many variables as we could that we could fill in with numbers, and the rest of them we tried to get replacement values. So this is where we are. So here we have 2 is equal to one, the quantity 1 plus r to the fifth power. Of course, to get rid of that fifth power, I'm going to take the fifth root. So I'm going to take the fifth root of this thing. At the same time, I'm going to take the fifth root of 2. Be slow to do anything about the fifth root of 2. Just leave it, in my opinion, as the fifth root of 2, unless uh, you're a finance major, in which case I guess you'd have to come up with something. But can we agree that the fifth root cancels the fifth power, and that leaves us with r, uh, sorry, 1 plus r. We want just r, don't we? So we'll subtract 1 from both sides, and we'll get the fifth root of 2 minus 1 is equal to r. If you're a math major, a bio major, a chemistry major, leave it like this. This is the answer the way your professor would like it. However, if you're a finance major, a business major, an accounting major, this has to be given as a percent. So what you would do is go to your calculator. I'm just going to show you really quickly. I, went to, I did. I went to my calculator, and I put in our problem. This is the fifth root of 2 minus 1 happens to be 0.148 eight whatever I am going to round up to make sure right under promise over produce is the saying so the rate is 14.9 if you want to you can say approximately but if you were giving somebody financial advice you would definitely say 14.9 percent all right like, I hope this is helpful. This stuff is not that bad. I think that you can do it. First thing you have to do is have this thing memorized. And then remember, with any math problem, if you're going to get a numerical solution, you can only have one. You can only have one variable. All right? If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks.